everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and thank you all here in San Francisco who made it through that traffic challenge that we call the Bay Breakers Race. And uh, thank all of you who are listening on ACIM Gather. And thank all of you now who are watching this video on YouTube. So grateful that you have tuned into our YouTube videos. Please watch all our videos. We make a video of every Sunday teaching. Uh, we have for two and a half years, and they're wonderfully prepared for us by our very talented assistant minister, Reverend Kelly Halleck. So thank you. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll get a little email every time we uh, upload the new video. And if you subscribe, you can also leave comments uh, underneath the videos, and we love to hear those. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about Dominion. Dominion. That's not the Minions, those little yellow cartoon characters that are in the Despicable Me movies. They're not, not Minions, but Dominion. Uh, there is this one line that it was in the reading that Reverend Brad uh, read, and I always think of it, and I, I, it always just rings true to me and, and, and resonates with me. And it says, the purpose of today's exercises is to begin, I think the begin is important, to begin to instill in you a sense that you have dominion over all things because of what you are. So we have dominion over all things. And the purpose of these exercises is to really just give us a nice push and orientation in that direction. And I acknowledge that it's a challenge for most people to start thinking about the world in such a way that they conceptualize it as a realm that they rule, that they have dominion over. Uh, if you look up the word dominion in the dictionary, it says sovereignty or control. And uh, even actually if you, if you, you put a plural on it like dominions, it's like the territory of a sovereign or a government. So it's really the territory that we rule the territory that we control. And this workbook lesson, which is workbook lesson number 38, says that we have dominion over all things. And that means to me, the world. We have dominion over the world. We're not a victim of the world. We're not a subject of the world. The world is ruled actually by us. If you look up the word sovereignty, sovereignty means supreme power or authority the authority of a state to govern itself or another state. So dominion means sovereignty and it means control. And that is indeed who we are. We are the sovereign. We are the controller. We are ruling this world that we see. And we need to keep orienting our minds and our perceptions and our philosophical foundation in that direction. And if it's just a beginning journey, then that's great. Then we begin the journey. And as the Tao Te Ching said, you know, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So just, you know, let's just take a single step. But I know many of us have been playing with these ideas for a long time. So today we're making a, a hundredth step or a, a thousandth step. There are many passages in A Course of Miracles that talk about this. And uh, I, I love these passages, and they resonate with me really strongly every time I read them. And one of my favorite ones is this, and it's very poetically stated. Um, this is also from the workbook. It's workbook lesson number 156. It says, the world is sanctified because of you. All things that live bring gifts to you, and they offer them in gratitude and gladness at your feet. The scent of flowers is their gift to you. The waves bow down before you. And the trees extend their arms to shield you from the heat and lay their leaves before you on the ground that you may walk in softness while the wind sinks to a whisper around your holy head. I mean, that's a pretty grand image of who and what we actually are, that the entire world and all the things that appear in the world to be, to be living are, are giving us gifts in, of gratitude all the time. You know, we can, we can think of that. And I, you know, how often do we think of that? Like if we smell a beautiful flower, like smell beautiful roses from time to time, 
Do we think about that the roses are actually giving us that perfume, that pleasing scent as a gift? As a gift, because we are the sovereign of those roses. And they recognize it. They recognize the light that is in us. They see it as their own light, and they're blessing us with, with those gifts. And do we think when we see the ocean waves that are so majestic, that, that these waves are really saluting us and are acknowledging our own majesty and, and uh, power. And that's why they're doing that. It's like they're applauding us. They're acknowledging us. And we can learn to be in the world in that frame of mind. And it may not be the way some of us are used to thinking, but we could become more used to thinking that way. And that's what it means to understand that we have dominion over all things. And as long as we just begin this journey and start walking in that direction as much as we can, as much as we can push ourselves a little bit, maybe just a little bit more than our comfort zone. I think, uh, you know, of course we can embrace these thoughts as much as that feels comfortable, but can we push it just a little bit beyond what, what settles comfortably with us, knowing that it must be the truth. It just has to be the truth. Uh, in 2016, we did a conference in Las Vegas, as you all know, or most of you know. The theme of that conference was Change Your Mind, Change the World. And that was based on this quotation from A Course in Miracles. And all those themes for the conferences and the quotations they were based on, they, they always have a certain significance for me afterwards, because all of those uh, conferences were real seminal uh, bookmarker events in my life and you know I, I think of them and I think of all the things we really tried to teach in those conferences so change your mind change the world was a big teaching and this was the quote it was based on it says herein lies your ultimate release change but your mind on what you want to see and all the world must change accordingly so again it's showing us how tied to our thinking the world is and that the world is actually just a mirror reflecting our thinking to us. It's that symbolic representation of our mind and of our thinking. So of course we have dominion over the world because we have dominion over our thinking. We can choose the thoughts that we think. That will change the world. Change but your mind on what you want to see. And all the world must change accordingly. It doesn't say some of the world's going to change. It doesn't say your relationships with your friends will change. It says all the world's going to change. Because all the world is a merely a reflection of our thinking. And we have dominion. We are the sovereign of it all. This quotation... I always love too. It says, you do not ask too much of life, but far too little. When you let your mind be drawn to bodily concerns, to things you buy, to eminence as valued by the world, you ask for sorrow, not for happiness. So the Course is continually challenging us to ask for more and to stop getting hooked into this idea that you know, things that we might want to buy or maybe our, our station in life and uh, our eminence, as it says, is really the important thing. It's like, no, we, we're entitled to all of it, not just a teeny portion of it. You know, think about it. The waves in the ocean are applauding us and saluting us. The flowers are giving us gifts of, of the scent. One thing that really works for me, too, is just when I, when I see a beautiful sunset or sometimes just the beautiful clouds in the sky, to really just think that's nature painting, a gorgeous painting, just for me. Just for me to enjoy and smile at. And uh, that's what it means for me to have dominion. And I'm not going to be drawn to these small little things. I'm going to be drawn to the big thing. The, the big challenge of healing the world, healing my mind, healing all my brothers and sisters, uh, manifesting a, a real world, a heal world, a world of, of love and abundance. And, and that's total. And I go for that because I'm continually playing with these thoughts and the reality of having dominion and being the sovereign of it all. Any sovereign, any ruler, any king 
wants to, or mostly, want to rule benevolently. They want their country to prosper and to thrive. This is our kingdom. It's a reflection of our mind, which is our kingdom. We want our mind to thrive. We expect the world to thrive and prosper and be beautiful and plentiful and peaceful. Another workbook lesson, this is workbook lesson number 236. It says, I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. I have a kingdom I must rule. At times it does not seem I am, to, I am its king at all. It seems to triumph over me and tell me what to think and what to do and feel. And yet it has been given me to serve whatever purpose I perceive in it. My mind can only serve. So we rule our mind and we rule it benevolently and lovingly and peacefully and powerfully understanding that we are its sovereign, we are its king, we can rule, we can govern our thinking, we can choose our thoughts. And as we change our mind to think more with the Holy Spirit, to think more thoughts of life and love in abundance, the world is going to reflect that because we have dominion over all things. There's so many quotes in A Course of Miracles that talk about our power and our power to heal and our power to save and our power to manifest perfection in, in whatever way is most appropriate for it. Here's a great one about health. It says the body's health is fully guaranteed because it is not limited by time, by weather or fatigue, by food and drink or any laws you made it serve before. We just had this one this past week. And, uh, and, you know, and I love this one. And I think that when it says the body is not limited by time, what it really means is the body doesn't need to age. It's not limited by time. It doesn't need to age, especially the way that it seems to appear out there in the world. It appears out there that way in the world because of the way that we think. But if we change our thinking, and we can change our thinking because we do rule our mind, then we can expect that reflection to change. In another place, this is from the teacher's manual, it says, is it not madness to think of life as being born, aging, losing vitality, and dying in the end? This whole idea of aging is insane. It doesn't make uh, reasonable sense if we align our minds to truth and to light and to our infinite nature. Aging has got to be seen as, as pure insanity. You know, here's a little challenge for you. Just, just be aware. Just be aware in all of your conversations with people throughout a week or so, how many times people that you're talking to affirm something about aging. You know, I know it's especially because uh, I'm getting ready to have a birthday. And, you know, uh, I'm getting ready to have my 66th birthday, which means many of my contemporaries are kind of also around this age bracket. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a very common conversation about aging and the more limitations that bodies now have, if not your own body, then the body of somebody else. And, and when I'm like aware of this, I'm, just, I'm, I'm amazed at how often we repeat these ideas to ourselves over and over and over and over again. Uh, Reverend Duceltia knows, like I, I, I try to correct those when they come up for, with her and myself and other people just to like, you know, that's not the truth. That's what we believe. That's what we see out there sometimes, but it's not the truth. And it's, it's, it's not only not the truth, it's nuts. It's madness. It's insanity. And we have to start moving in that direction. Remember I said, just to begin to instill a sense of dominion. So wherever you're at, just keep moving in that direction. Now, now people say, well, you know, you just look, I mean, what about animals age? And I said, yeah, animals age because we believe in aging. And so we project it out, it's not just our own bodies, it's, we project it out there on all the bodies. It all seems to be aging. It says, this is regarded as the way of nature, the cyclical, the changing, the unsure, the undependable, the unsteady, waxing and waning in a certain way upon a certain path, and all of this is taken as the will of God. So we think that must be the way God made things. And what A Course in Miracles wants us to get is 
God's not nuts. <laughs> God's not nuts. That's nutty. And it comes from our own insanity. It doesn't come from God. I'll let the sirens come by. That's our insanity too. It comes from our insanity. It's not the will of God. Just because it exists out there in what appears to be nature doesn't make it the truth. That's again just the world. And we have dominion of that world. It could be different. It will be different because it will eventually reflect the truth. How far are you, are you willing to go today in that direction? Take another step. Push yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone of wherever you are with those ideas and make progress moving towards the idea of a reflection of eternal life even here in the world. From the workbook, lesson number 109, which is I Rest in God, each hour that you take your rest today, a tired mind is suddenly made glad. A bird with broken wings begins to sing. A stream, long dry, begins to flow again. The world is born again each time you rest and hourly remember that you came to bring the peace of God into the world that it might take its rest along with you. So. This is saying it again, real directly. It's, it's repeated over and over again. Our mind, our peaceful mind, our mind resting in the truth is what makes birds sing. Birds sing because they buy into that energy, that peaceful loving, and they, they sing to give us a song. Like the flower is giving us the gift of their scent, the birds are giving us the gift of their beautiful music. And they're saluting us because it's our minds that are transmitting that beauty to them to give back to us. The stream that was dry is now flowing because of us, because of our minds, because we tapped into the truth of abundance and life and supply and nourishment. And so the stream is reflecting that and giving us the water and the beauty that that is our gift from the stream. So again, the, the tie between our minds and the world, even things like birds and streams, is direct. It's in the course. It's right there. Uh, there's another thing from um, the teacher's manual. Uh, it says, that this is talking about the world, and again, how it, how it just reflects our own mistaken thinking this time. Yet it is time alone that winds on wearily, and the world is very tired now. It is old and worn and without hope. Time, with its illusion of change and death, wears out the world and all things in it. Yet time has an ending, and it is this that the teachers of God are appointed to bring about. For time is in their hands. Such was their choice, and it is given them. So even time and the weariness that we see in the world is still under our control. We still have dominion over time and space and, and everything. And if the world seems old and weary, if we seem to be running out of resources, if global warming seems to be cursing uh, humankind, it is still up to us to change that. And we can change it because we have dominion. And remember the quote that I started it off with. We just are beginning to move in this direction. So take an extra little step today, if you can. I'll end with one more quote from the workbook. This is from Lesson 132, which uh, we had just about a week ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, there is no world. This is the central thought this course attempts to teach. Not everyone is ready to accept it. And each one must go as far as he can let himself be led along the way to truth. So again, that acknowledgement. Not everybody's ready to accept that thought. And even we, of course, the miracle students, might not be ready to accept that thought. Totally. But we can begin. And we can take steps. And we can be led a little further down that path. Because in the end... The idea that there is no world, just a reflection of our own minds, that's the central thought of Course in Miracles is teaching. It never lets up on it. It's all throughout it. 
We move a little bit more. We take another step in that direction. We begin. So I, I trust that this talk and you listening to it and you hearing it here is helping all of us, and myself included, just take one more step down that path. Thank you very much. We have dominion. Bye.